Hey what's going on guys, Toji Bursi here and welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to be covering the second part to our uh, Minecraft modding tutorial series for 1.16.4. <coughs> um, in this episode I'm going to be covering the basic workspace setup and depending on how long that takes um, I am going to be doing an item. So the first thing I'm actually going to do, um, or first thing I'm going to mention, um, is actually my Discord server. Um, I want to get this at the start of the video so that everyone knows of its existence. Now my Discord server uh, is a link in the description, um, and in there you can get help for uh, any issues you are having with uh, modding in general, uh, or this series, um, and yeah there's over a thousand uh, modders there so um, yeah you're you're bound to get help now um, we do do other stuff there of course we have a competition running at the moment um, several other things are going on um, so yeah be sure to join there now that I have got that over and done with um, I'm going to go ahead and just mention I have changed to the darkest dark theme um, so if you want to have your theme the same as mine, um, I did talk about it in the previous episode um, and I just installed the plugin. Um, just because basic dark theme Eclipse was looking a bit weird, um, I don't really know what was going on with that. But yeah, at the start of this one, I want to go ahead and actually go through a few more plugins. So let's go into the Eclipse Marketplace. There is a few things I always like to install, um, and it's up to you whether you install these, um, but I would recommend it. So the first one is if you search JSON in here, we want the JSON plugin, and that will just highlight our JSONs, um, make it so they are readable. Um, so if we just install this top one, and just wait for that to do its thing just accept the terms and conditions and then finish um, and that will start installing that um, that might want to restart uh, install anyways um, yeah that will ask us to restart so I'm just going to let that restart ok Eclipse has just loaded back up um, the next one I want to install, or at least the, the first thing I check for, um, when I'm, why is it not bringing up the window I want? Eclipse Marketplace. Okay. The second thing I always search for, at least, um, they don't always, there's not always one on here, but hopefully there is one on here, is a Tommel plugin. No, it seems that isn't. That is a shame. So the next thing I just install personally um, is just Discord Rich Presence, which means uh, it shows what I'm doing in Discord. Like in Discord, it will show what I'm doing on Eclipse, uh, if that makes any sense. So that's just going to restart, and I will see you when that is done. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, that is now done. Now the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is actually rename this com.example um, right here. So this com.example.example mod. Now this actually shouldn't be like that. Um, so the way I always do it is uh, com and then dot your Minecraft username dot the mod name. Um, however, that is not what you're actually meant to do. Um, you are meant to do it um, if you own the domain, so if you have a website called like turtywerty.com, I can do com.turtywerty, but I don't actually own that domain, so I'm not actually meant to use that. The way you can do it, however, is using uh, GitHub. Um, so I believe it is something like io.github.com turty worthy for example um, or maybe it might actually be github.io. no I think it's io.github 
it's normally the opposite way round. So io.github.derealdirtyworthy. So is that's what I should be using. Um, but I am just going to use com dot worthy um, dot tutorial mod. It's up to you what you use. It doesn't really matter, but that's just sort of what you're meant to do. Um, and I don't do it. Okay, so next we can just load up this example mod class and there's a few things we want to do so first we actually want to rename this class now this class shall be known as your main class um, because that's what it is it's the main class of your mod um, and I'm going to call this um, tutorial mod so it should be called your mod name basically so say it was void mod uh, you, you're making a void mod you would just call this void mod um, or just void you don't have to put the mod on if you don't want to um, the next thing I'm going to do is just delete some methods here so I'm going to delete this uh, registry events parts at the bottom I'm going to delete uh, server starting process IMC in queue IMC uh, do client stuff I'm going to delete all of that um, and I'm also going to go ahead and delete all of the comments um, you don't have to delete the comments if you don't want to um, but I already know sort of what I'm doing so I don't need those comments and then I'm also going to go ahead and delete this stuff in here and I'm going to delete these three lines there and I'm just going to make this logger field public um, because we want to access that globally um, and then we just need to do our mod ID so you may be wondering what is a mod ID so a mod ID is basically the um, unique ID for your mod so this needs to be unique if it is the same as any other mod then it's not going to be compatible with that mod so you want to have this as unique as possible it is recommended that you have at least seven characters um, the mod ID, mod ID needs to be fully lowercase you, can't, you cannot have any uppercase um, you can have underscores, you can have numbers but you cannot have any other special symbols it must just be um, for example tutorial five underscore uh, and then letters you cannot have um, capitals and you cannot have like exclamation marks or uh, any of these other symbols um, it has to be just completely normal so what I'm going to be using is tutorial mod so I know that's not unique but I'm not going to be publishing this mod so um, compatibility isn't um, a thing I'm even going to consider it, it doesn't matter but if I wanted to have it compatible I would need to do something like Turtie's tutorial mod which would mean it's compatible um, but for the sake of um, for the sake of this series I'm actually going to call it tutorial uh, it's just a lot simpler for me um, but obviously just make sure you have that unique then um, I think we can actually leave the rest yeah the rest is fine so after that we need to go into our source main resources and we're going to open this meta inf folder in here you will see we have a mods.toml now if I double click this you will see um, it does come up with an error um, and to fix that you can just right click and open with and choose the text editor and that will be a massive wall of grey text sadly Eclipse doesn't have um, any highlighting for Tommels which is a bit of a shame um, but all we basically want to do is remove the comments now you need to be really careful here um, well you, you don't have to remove the comments that's just what I like to do um, but you need to be careful not to delete any of the actual uh, lines in here that you need so this stuff um, I will have a template mods.toml in the description um, 
but you just need to make sure you don't accidentally delete anything that you need. Um, and I'll tell you what you need in a second after I just remove all the comments. Okay, so as you can see, I have just gone ahead and uh, cleared out all the comments. It's, it's a lot cleaner now. Um, and I'm just going to just copy paste this real quick. Um, just so I can provide you with a template. Now we can actually go ahead and remove these, these two right here. However, I am going to actually leave them here. Um, just because even though you can remove them, I don't trust that you can remove them, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, I, I don't entirely trust that that is correct. Um, so I'm just going to go through everything here really quickly. So the mod loader is just the mod loader that we're using. Um, so Java FML is the one we're using. Um, the loader version is just the version for that loader. Um, so basically it needs to be um, anything above 35. Um, it can be higher, which is this part right here. Um, the license, so this is whatever license you're using for your project. Um, for now, I'm going to leave that as uh, ARR, but you can set whatever license you want. The next thing is the issue tracker URL. Now, if you don't have an issue tracker for your mod, you can just delete that, and I'm actually going to do so. Um, the next thing is just mods, so this just basically defines your actual mod. Uh, what you might want to do is just separate that part out from here. So the first thing is your mod ID. Now this needs to be the exact same as what is in your main class. If it's not, it's not going to work. So you need to make sure you are putting the exact same thing. Um, and obviously it is case sensitive. So uh, I'm just going to leave that as tutorial. Um, version is just basically whatever version your mod is. So mine will just be 1.0. The next thing is just the display name of your mod. You can have whatever in here. Um, mine will just be tutorial mod. Next is update JSON URL. If you don't know what this is, you can just remove it, uh, to be honest. And display URL. This basically should just bring you to your mod page, um, which I currently don't have. So I'm also going to remove that. Next thing is the logo file, so if you have a uh, file uh, or a logo for your mod you can just put it in here and that will start in the source main resources package, package. so you would just have a file here, um, just like the pack.mc meta but it obviously needs to be a PNG. Um, once again I don't have that so I am going to remove it. Uh, credits, these are optional and so are the authors. You can remove those if you want. However, I'm going to, I'm going to remove, no, I'll, I'll say thanks for all my subscribers in the credits, just so I can actually have the credits and the authors will be me. If you have another author, you can just say, um, I, I could say something like Turty Wurty for making the mod and then I could say um, Il Ilja615 uh, for the textures for example um, you know I'll leave Ilja there even though he's not going to be making the textures or maybe he will <laughs> I don't know it depends if I can bribe him to do so um, so yeah, that will just be your authors. Don't worry about these underlined things. Eclipse is just um, not happy with spellings. Uh, I think you can disable it in the settings, which isn't something I'm going to mess with right now. And then obviously you have these things right here. As I said, you can delete these. Um, oh, description, of course. So this is just the description of your mod. It's a multi-line thing, so you can have multiple lines. Um, Hello, hi, howdy, howdy, um, 
yes so yeah multi-line description pretty cool um, and then yeah these obviously so I'm actually just going to change this to dependencies.tutorial um, because I'm going to be leaving them here but delete them if you want um, if it does throw, throw you an error you probably want to add them back um, if, you, if you cannot delete them um, there will be something on screen right now saying do not delete it um, so yeah that is your mods.toml now I'm not going to have time to do an item in this video but instead I'm going to be covering uh, just the package layout we'll do the basic layout and stuff f just now um, and then we don't have to worry about that in the future so the first thing we want to do is create um, a package we will call this one uh, core ah yes that is another thing if you have um, it in this view you don't want it in this view or at least most people don't so we can just come into this view menu right here and if we go down to package presentation we can change it from flat to hierarchical and you'll see core then appears if we do a new package we can have dot common and we can have another package which will be dot client now this is just the way I always set up my mods um, I think it's just clean um, so basically the client stuff will be anything that is client side only um, then we'll have the common stuff which will be any objects so for example items blocks entities tile entities containers um, particles uh, potions enchantments mob spawn eggs whatever um, they will be in this common section and then we will have the core which will be for um, initialization classes, util classes, um, any sort of um, enums, interfaces. We want to shove that all into this core package. So I'm just real quick going to make some sub packages um, and I'm probably not going to create all the sub packages. We're going to have more in the future, um, but I'm just going to create some basic ones right now. So we'll start with client. Um, we're going to want client dot uh, entity, um, and then following that, we're going to want model. Um, we're then going to want uh, render. Actually, mm, we'll change that. Actually, instead of client dot entity, we'll go with client dot render and then delete we, we can move entity.model into renderer or just not do that apparently um, but we'll go client.util as well um, and then inside the renderer we will have a new package which will be entity and then we'll have a, another package which will be uh, tile entity Um, for now we'll have more in the future but for now that will be fine um, actually we'll also go model okay um, util yeah that's fine so that's pretty much it for the client package at the moment anyways um, common we will go ahead and create a new package for items we'll create a new package for blocks we will create a new package for entities we will create a new package for um, what else what else what else enchantments um, a package for potions package for tile entities uh, I'll just call that tiles a package for containers 
and that reminds me in the client package we want a package for screens or GUIs whatever you want to call that this is just my package layout you can lay it out however you want um, but yeah this is just the layout that I'm going to be aiming for um, we'll probably add to this in the future we also want actually another package and that will be dot world we'll keep our world stuff separately and we'll have another package for data gen as well because I want to get into data gen a little bit in this series um, let's go back to core let's create another package which will be util um, and another package for init um, another package for enums just keep all our enums and um, another package for interfaces we just want to keep those in one place um, or at least I want to keep them in one place organize this how you want um, okay and also we'll go with one more main package and we'll call this um, mix-ins I'm not going to speak too much about that at the moment though um, yeah that should be fine I do just want to create a few classes at the start not not overboard just a few classes that we will keep for the future so I'm going to have an item in it so this is basically where we initialize all our items I'm going to have a block in it I'm going to have a entity type in it I'm going to have a tile entity type in it I'm going to have a container type in it Um, obviously if your mod isn't going to have one of these you don't need to create an init class for them and you don't need to create a package for them um, but obviously I'm going to be having them so um, I'll do one for each of these packages I suppose so enchantment init um, and potion init oh I meant class not package potion in it there we go so they're all the classes I'm going to have for now um, I'll come back to them in the future of course um, anything else anything else anything else let's go into clients.util uh, actually yeah yeah um, I'll just have a class in here for client I'll call this client utils um, for now and we are just going to really quickly annotate this with only in dist.client this means that this this class will um, crash if it's used on the server side um, we only want this to be client and I think that is about it for this video so um, we didn't get to items but that's fine we've done a lot of setup stuff here um, I will just show you that you we, we should now be able to run the game I'm pretty sure um, we do have an issue I think that's fine all you need to do to run the game is press this run button right here and choose run client we might get an error if so we can debug it let's have a look okay okay here we go so here we go um, build path specifies execution environment um, 1.8 there are no JREs installed in the workspace that are strictly compatible compiler compliance specified 1.8 but JRE 15 is used okay just give me a second guys I am just going to 
look this up and then I will come back with you um, when I figure it out. Okay, so guys, I have fixed the error. Um, it's a little finicky to get to, but what we need to do is right click our project, go down to properties, go into the Java build uh, Java build path on the left, um, and in the libraries section, we need to go ahead choose this JRE, hit edit, and go on to installed JREs. And uh, what you need to do is just go ahead and uh, press search and then choose where your JDK is installed. So that will normally be in the C drive, program files, Java, um, and then as you can see, I have loads of JDKs in here. Um, I just chose the most recent one <coughs> and I uh, selected the folder that just searches through them all. Um, and I'm just going to delete that one because it's a duplicate. And I had this one selected by default, um, so I just chose this one. Um, I'm actually going to, I think I can rename this. Um, so Java 8 is what I'm going to call that. Just call that uh, finish. Um, so there's uh, Java 8. Um, I suppose I could rename it and call it uh, JRE. JRE8. Uh, rename this one. And I'm going to call this one JDK8. And this one, I believe, is JRE15. So JRE15. I'm just going to rename them. You don't have to rename them. And then just hit apply apply and close, finish, apply, apply and close and then when you hit run it will go ahead and run the game as you can see in the console down here. Um, one thing I do recommend you do is just right click the console, go to preferences um, and uncheck this limit console output um, and that will just mean that uh, it can be endless console. Uh, it might increase your RAM a little bit, um, but it's worth it because when you're sending logs to people, you want to get the whole log. Um, and by not limiting the console output, you can actually just send what's outputted by the console instead of grabbing the log. So this will just um, load up. It's not complete wanting to comply. You guys it has loaded. okay so as you can see it has actually loaded and if we go into mods we can see minecraft forge and our tutorial mod with everything in here as we like it so yeah um, i hope you guys did enjoy this tutorial if you did please do be sure to smash your face into that like button and go ahead and subscribe um, make sure to hit that notification bell and then you will not miss a video when I post the next one um, which will be on items so yeah uh, I'll see you guys then goodbye